The presentation today is entitled, What Should One Consider True Success at the End of Life? But before I continue, I would like to uh, mention for clarification, in my presentation I'm using the uh, letters YHVH or in Hebrew Yotevafe, pronounced as Yahuwah instead of Lord, which is a title and not a name, and I'm using Yahusha instead of Jesus, which is not a translation but a transliteration and really has no meaning, neither in Hebrew nor in English. Yahuwah and Yahusha are the actual original names and the true nature and character of them. So back to our question, what should one consider true success at the end of his or her life? Success is having your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In Luke 10, 20, it states, Rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Now the question, how can I make sure that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? There is only one way. We must know who we worship. Only the one that is the way, the truth, and the life. We are talking about the King of Kings. the creator and keeper of the universe. The great I am, the Yote Vafe. It is the Olive Tuff, the only savior. In Isaiah 43:11, he himself states, I, I am Yotevafi, Yahuwah, and besides me, there is no Savior. Question, who is our Savior according to Isaiah 43:11? It is the Father. In uh, Isaiah 52, 6, it states, My people shall know my name. This sounds like a salvation issue, to know his name. If you are part of his people, you will know his name. The redeemed are also known by their name. In Isaiah 43, 1, it states, But now thus says Yahuwah, your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. In John 10, 3, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name, and leads them out. 
Therefore, the redeemed know the Father's name. Psalm 91.14 Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. What a privilege! And this Yahuwah, the great I am, the Isle of Tav, the Creator, the King of Kings, the Master of Masters, called the Word, became flesh, known as Yahusha, and dwelt among us, according to John 1, 1 to 3, and verse 14. Yahusha is Yahuwah in the flesh. His name means the one that exists, saves. The only one. There is no other. Many people, now we are talking about created beings with a limited brain capacity, try to explain this Most High Elohim, the one that is unsearchable, incomprehensible, untouchable, all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present, the one that created them. There is no f way, my friends, that puny men will ever be able to explain or comprehend the Most High Elohim, who created men. In the Biblian Study Bible, Isaiah 40:18, it says, To whom will you liken Yahuwah? To what image will you compare him? To an idol that a craftsman casts, and a metal worker overlays with gold and fits with silver chains? We cannot explain. Yahuwah or compare him to anything we know here on earth. That is impossible. Because the secret matters belong to Yahuwah our Elohim, but what is revealed belongs to us and to our children forever. To do all the words of his Torah. That's in Deuteronomy 29.29. That means every individual should be more concerned about what Yahuwah, our Savior, is expecting from his creation and learn what pleases him in order to dwell with him forever. Because our strength is in obedience according to Deuteronomy 11, 7 to 9. The bottom line is that there is nothing on earth, no one, no thing, no nation, can truly be likened or compared to Yahuwah. Man needs to understand this and stop such useless attempts. Satan is behind such attempts trying to reduce the great I am to man-made idols. It says in Psalms 96.45, For great is Yahuwah, and great to be praised. He is to be feared above all mighty ones. For all the mighty ones of the peoples are matters of naught. That means worthless, idols, false gods, devils, demons. But Yahuwah made the heavens. Think about this fact. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool according to Acts 7.49 or Isaiah 66.1. Isaiah 55.9 
As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. On the other hand, we can and we must personally know Yahuwah, the one that created the universe and holds it in the palm of his hand. But we cannot, we cannot explain him or compare him to anything that is created. Yahuwah is spirit. He revealed himself through Yahusha in the flesh. That means Yahusha the Son is Yahuwah the Father in the flesh. They are one, they are a heart. Here's what happened in John 14:89. Philip said to him, to Yahusha, Master, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Yahusha said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say, Show us the Father? Now, why would Yahusha say that? Again, Yahusha is the Father in the flesh. Can we as created beings explain that? No. We must accept it by faith and leave it right there. Scripture states that he humbled himself, taking the form of a servant, became one of us to show us the love of the Father, and to restore his image in those that are willing to be restored. He died for the past sins of everyone that has confessed and forsaken them, and gave us an example of how to live a fruitful and set-apart life. Yahuwah is a friend to them that fear him. He teaches them his covenant, according to Psalms 25:14. So Yahuwah, our Heavenly Father, is the best friend you will ever have, and here is why. He states in scripture, Elohim, meaning Yahuwah, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only brought for son in this translation, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but possess, have everlasting life. For Elohim did not send his son into the world to judge the world or to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 3, 16 to 17. Then Yahuwah says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you near to me. Jeremiah 31, 3. So here is a question. What kind of love is an everlasting love? Mentioned in Jeremiah 31.3. We are talking about a love that is not bound by time. Because it is everlasting, his love cannot be manipulated. Neither will it let you down. Yahuwah's love can be trusted, held on to, and accept it. Everlasting love exists from eternity, past into eternity future. There is no beginning, nor end. It just is. It just exists. Because Yahuwah exists. 
the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose ways are everlasting, changes not. With him there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. See Isaiah 57.15, Habakkuk 3.6, and James 1.17. However, we have to be careful. Using phrases like, I have loved you with an everlasting love, does not mean Yahuwah will let you live as your carnal nature pleases and save you at the end. The everlasting love is shown by giving man a space of time to think things over and to turn to the Creator by repenting of their evil ways and to follow His instructions given in Torah. Yahuwah desires all men, A-L-L, to be saved and to come under the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2.4 For it states in Acts 10, 34-35, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive, that Elohim is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that fears him and works righteousness is accepted with him. The Call to repentance and to turn to obedience is a message of love to all people. In Deuteronomy 6.25 it says, And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before Yahuwah our Elohim as He has commanded us. Yahuwah is not slow in regard to the promise, as some count slowness, but he is patient toward us, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, by giving us a space of time. So time is very valuable, and we need to use it to his honor and glory. Second Peter 3.9 in Isaiah 30, 18, it says, And therefore will Yahuwah wait, that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For Yahuwah is an Elohim of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. As surely as I live, declares the Master Yahuwah, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked but rather that the wicked should turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die, O house of Israel? That's Ezekiel 33, 11. Now let's not forget, let's remember, time is a gift from heaven. So do not waste it, do not squander it. And I'm sure that we all have been guilty of that. In Exodus 34, 6, he says, I am Yahuwah, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Whatever sins and evil you have committed, I can forgive you, if you will truly confess your sins to me and repent of your sins and evil ways and choose to obey my commandments, statutes, and judgments.
The question, how can anyone reject such an offer of love and say no? Only fools. Why? The question is why? Why would anyone reject this offer of eternal life, which is promised those that accept him as their savior? We read in 1 Corinthians 2, 9, But as it is written, Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of men the things which Yah has prepared for them that love him. You may say, but I'm a good person. I live a decent life. I have not murdered or stolen from anyone. So I don't need to confess any sins to Yahuwah and don't really need to obey his commandments as I am living a good life my own way. Have you ever told a small lie, gossiped about someone or spoken in a nasty way to someone? Have you ever stolen something small, disrespected your parents or your spouse, drank too much alcohol, used foul language, rebelled against obeying Yahuwah by living the life you away and cursed the Elohim of heaven? We are all sinners ever since Adam and Eve or disobeyed Yahuwah in the Garden of Eden. We are born with a sinful nature and a spirit that wants to do things our way. That is why the world is so evil today, because they have turned their backs on their Maker and His commandments, statutes, and judgments. Romans 3.10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. Most people don't even know what righteousness is because they have not been taught. Because they have been deceived by religion. Our Bibles have been changed. The Father's name has been removed over 7,000 times and replaced with pagan titles. The Son's name was changed to a Greek Messiah called J.C. Do you know what that means? If you change the names from Yahuwah to the Lord of Baal, Baal, and from Yahusha to Jesus, you are changing leaders. Do you know what else that means? That means all the millions of the Christian Bibles that had been and are being printed and distributed, even unknowingly, are praising and supporting the kingdom of Satan. That is hard to take, because the Bibles were corrupted and changed by the arch enemy. He knows what he is doing by changing the name from Yahuwah to Baal and from Yahusha to Jesus. I also know that our Heavenly Father is in control and He has ways and means to find the serious truth seekers. The ones that have not bowed their knees to Baal to lead them to Him. Even if they have a corrupted Bibles, he can work on their heart and to show them the truth. 
but they have to dig for truth. Did you know Sir Francis Bacon was the editor of the King James Bible, printed in 1611, and he was a Freemason? The first edition of the King James Bible, the King James Version Bible, which was edited by Francis Bacon and prepared under Mason supervision, bears more Mason's marks than the Cathedral of Strasbourg. That was written by Manley P. Hall. Not only that, but Christianity took the scriptures and the stories which belonged to Yahuwah and credited them to Baal, the Lord. And they took the story of the Hebrew Messiah of the New Testament that talk about Yahusha and credited them to the Greek Messiah called J.C. That was created in the 3rd century by Constantine, who was a sun worshipper. That is the ultimate deception, because there was no Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. Since truth has been covered with the traditions of men, people need to be educated. This presentation is to help you and to come back on the straight and narrow road that leads to eternal life. Only as you turn to Yahuwah and confess your sins to Him through Yahusha can you be helped. If I do not warn you, I will be held responsible for not warning you. This is clear in Ezekiel 33, 7 to 12. It says there, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning for me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will acquire at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your souls. And you know, I have thought many times, what is a wicked person? And you know, it's very simple. A wicked person is a person that does not follow Torah. And all you have to do is go to Matthew 7, 21 to 23, and read these verses. Because there will be many people coming to uh, the Savior and saying, and will be disappointed and saying, have we not taught in your uh, schools, on your streets, and have we not uh, done many wonderful and good works in your name? And what does he say? Depart from me, I have never known you, ye that are without Torah, anomos. And it is being translated as iniquity. Continue on in Ezekiel 33, 7. And you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus have you said, Surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we rot away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them as I live, declares Yahuwah Elohim, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, of the ones that are without Torah, but that the wicked turn from the way and live, meaning obey Torah. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for while will you die, O house of Israel? Note, let me say this again, the true faith of Yahusha, our Savior, has been corrupted and changed to create many Christian denominations actually over 41,000 of them, 
and teachings that are not biblical and therefore leading their people straight to damnation. Please, do not be one of them. We are individually commanded to search the scripture and to prove all things. This is a personal responsibility. And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. That's in Jeremiah 29, 13 and all the in Deuteronomy 4, 29. My friends, in matters of salvation, we cannot trust any man, church or denomination. There's only one we can trust that is the Father, Yahuwah, and the Son, Yahusha and their instructions called Torah. If someone trusts in man, his pastor, in his denomination, and makes flesh his arm, he or she is stuck in a box. Your church or pastor cannot give you eternal life. You need to study and understand scripture for yourself so that you will not be deceived by the lies and deceptions of pastors and churches. Begin daily reading and studying your Bible. Ask for help. You will find contact information at the end of this presentation. Be encouraged to read, study, and understand scripture for yourself. With subjects like salvation, what happens when you die, judgment, false pagan holidays, true set-apart days of Yahuwah, and many other interesting subjects to help you walk closer to your Savior and enjoy eternal life, which is more precious than silver or gold. Remember, success is when your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Please do not ignore this message. Yahusha came and died on the tree for your, for your repented and forsaken sins and took the punishment you deserve on himself so you can come to love and know him intimately and enjoy eternal life. Satan wants you to go to the lake of fire. And there is a lake of fire. It's going to be real because scripture says so. And he is using many people in your life to hurt and to, de to deceive you so you can blame your heavenly father for all the pain and suffering you went through. Yahuwah did not cause all the suffering, the pain and the evil in this world. People have chosen to ignore and turn their backs on Yahuwah and his Torah that is why there is so much evil in this world today. Please choose to come to your Savior Yahuwah through Yahusha today so he can heal you and fill you with his wonderful love, joy and peace and set you free from bitterness and a broken heart. When you choose to forgive those who have hurt you and even pray for them, your bondage will be broken as all the pain, hurt and bitterness will be gone as you surrender these people to Yahusha and forgive them. That does not mean that the hurt and pain they do to you is acceptable. No, it simply means you are now free to live your life free from anger, unforgiveness and bitterness. Satan will no longer have you in bondage to him.
Did you know that your Heavenly Father created you and loves you so much and is reaching out to you right now so that you can turn from darkness into His marvelous light? You are fearfully and wonderfully made to glorify your Creator, Yahuwah, and to live eternally, if you choose so. Did you know that the Holy Scripture is the only book that claims that it is the word of Elohim forever? History, archaeology, and Bible prophecy have proved over and over that the Scripture is true. Truth is something that does not change. People and their laws change each day. But Yahuwah's truth is eternal. As he says, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Therefore, Yahuwah's Torah, his law, is eternal and stands forever as a moral foundation of how to truly love one another and live a blessed life. Yahuwah wrote the Ten Commandments in stone with his own finger. Exodus 31, 18. Then said Yahusha to those Jews which believed in him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 31-32. If we just obeyed the Ten Commandments, think about it, there would be no robberies, stealing, murder, adultery, and sexual sin, lies, dishonesty, and evil. People would put Yahuwah first in their, li in their lives, fear and respect Him, and then they would all the care for their family and neighbors and truly love one another. There would be no alcohol, no drugs, no sickness. So why would a righteous Elohim tell anyone that his laws no longer apply? It does not make sense. This is definitely the deception of Satan using pastors, priests, and false prophets to deceive the people so they will lose their eternal life. Please do not be one of those people who will be eternally lost because you chose to ignore this important message. Now remember, time is running out, and we have only one life to live. That's all. Your eternal destiny is it heaven or is it hell? Choose heaven. That is the best choice. So your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yahusha loves you and does not want you to perish, but wants you to admit that you are a sinner in need of his saving love. By confessing and repenting your sins to him and choosing to obey his commandments, statutes and judgments, so you can enjoy eternal life. Whatever you do in this life is recorded by the angels in heaven, and you will have to stand before Yahusha at the final judgment to give an account of every evil thing you did. Once you have repented and confessed your sins to Yahusha, are baptized in His name, meaning the name Yahusha, not the name of the Greek Messiah, and choose to obey the Scriptures, then you are free from your sin and guilt and have assurance of eternal life. I have a question. Why do only a few find eternal life? 
You know, many people enjoy their lifestyle, including doing things that Scripture tells us to walk away from. Though they have a form of godliness, but because they walk in their own ways, choosing what to obey, they continue breaking Yahuwah's laws, his Torah. What does scripture say about lawlessness, of being without Torah? To be lawless is to be contrary, opposite to obeying the law or to act without regard to the law. Laws are necessary in a sinful world. 1 Timothy 1.9 And those who choose to act lawlessly, meaning being without the Torah, being without his instructions, his guidelines, are called evil, even if they're religious. Another question, why is it necessary for us to obey Yahuwah's instructions, his commandments, statutes, and judgments? Many people ask the question, what's the difference between commandments, statutes, judgments, and ordinances? Yahuwah's commandments, statutes, and judgments are his instructions, his will, and they lay the foundation for a righteous society and the administrative procedures needed to govern it. Statutes are degrees requirements or boundaries set by the Creator. The yearly appointed festivals, as an example, are statutes and very important and are salvational according to Psalms 115-155. There it says salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. Again, the wicked are those that reject Torah the instruction in Torah, and then judgments instruct us in what to do in a situation, and commandments are orders or charges given to be followed. By the way, the seven annual appointed feast of Yahuwah are a compacted prophecy of the plan of redemption. These are rehearsals until the final fulfillment on the new earth. So we have the spring holidays, which is Passover, which points to Yahusha's death. Then you have um, unleavened bread, which is a burial. You have first fruits, his resurrection, and then 50 days later, Pentecost, the giving of the Torah, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh at Pentecost. Then we have the fall holidays, the trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and tabernacles. As mentioned, the seven feasts represent the seven great events in the plan of redemption. So the spring feast represented Messiah's coming as a suffering servant. Yahuwah has given his people the plan of redemption, though they need not to be in darkness. They know exactly what the plan is, so they can be prepared and ready for each event. The feasts all they have a final fulfillment when the Messiah returns as a conquering king. So let's not forget the words of Paul, but ye brethren are not a darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. That's in 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 to 5.
all festivals have had fulfillment at the first application during the first 4,000 years of history. Yahusha fulfilled its part of all the festivals during his messianic time on earth. The second application, all the festivals are still awaiting their complete and final third application to Yahuwah's bride, the 144,000, according to Revelation 14, 1 to 5. These are completely unleavened people to be chosen as a final wave sheet, first fruits, to be anointed at Pentecost. They will all the herald and the kingdom after the final day of atonement where all are sealed or marked. And then the long-awaited second coming will finally be realized at Tabernacles. Today we are celebrating the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. This feast was not only commemorative, but typical. It not only pointed back to the wilderness sojourn, but as the Feast of Harvest, it celebrated the ingathering of the fruits of the earth and pointed forward to the great day of final ingathering when Yahusha shall send forth his reapers to gather the tares together in bundles for the fire and to gather the wheat into his garner. At that time, the wicked will be destroyed. We know that the Passover feast was fulfilled, not only to the event, but as to the exact time and hour. Therefore, in like manner, the second coming will occur on a feast day. Does that make sense? Since Yahusha died on the very feast day that pointed forward to his death, and he will come back on the very feast day that points forward to his second coming. In anticipation of that great day, the second coming of Messiah, we want to make sure that we have peace with Yahuwah and that our sins are confessed, repented of, and forsaken, and we are sealed with the seal, the Torah. Someone may ask, what is the definition of sin according to Scripture? John 3, 4 defines sin as lawlessness. Everyone who sins breaks the law, breaks the Torah. In fact, sin is lawlessness. To commit sin is to be lawless. That is, a sinner breaks Yahuwah's law. In this way, lawlessness is a rejection of Yahuwah. Satan, the Antichrist, will come as Jesus Christ. Yes, as the Christian Jesus Christ the Christian Messiah. He is called the lawless one, whose rise to power will be in accordance with how Satan works with lying signs and wonders. 2 Thessalonians 2.9 Yahusha is a true Messiah who kept his father's commandments, statutes and judgments and teaches us to do the same. What is the opposite of unrighteousness? It is obeying Yahuwah's commandments, statutes, and judgment. That simple. Lawlessness is the opposite of righteousness in verses such as Romans 6.19, 2 Corinthians 6.14, and Hebrews 1.9. The righteous who have the character of Yahusha, hate the deeds of lawlessness. Lot, a righteous man living in Sodom, was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. That's written in 2 Peter 2.8. The psalm is said, I abhor the assembly of evildoers and refuse to sit with the wicked. Psalm 26.5 We Israelites are to be law-abiding meaning follow Torah, follow his instructions. First people 4, 
15. Is it possible to believe in Yahusha and not be saved? Most people claiming to believe in Yahusha or to love Yahusha are no different than the rest of the world. Claiming to love Yahusha Messiah without obeying his commandment is a lie. The Torah foundation is the first five books of scripture where we can find all instructions on how to live a holy and righteous life. It is Yahuwah's message to humanity, his instructions on all aspects of life, both naturally and spiritually. And by reading that, I was uh, thinking of um, Romans 2.13, where it states, it is not the hearer of the Torah that are just before Elohim, but it's a doer of the Torah that shall be justified. When we live Torah, we live life in a loving and peaceful way, and that blesses our relationship and family to follow our example. The word Torah derives from the root word Yara, which has meanings of to throw, to shoot arrows, to point out or show, to direct, to teach or instruct. Unfortunately, Torah has nearly universally been translated as law when it is really a set of instructions on how to behave. It is Yahuwah's love letter to us, his gift, as only our Heavenly Father knows what is best for his children. Is baptism important once you believe and want to follow Yahusha? your Savior? Baptism first and foremost is for the forgiveness of his sins. Baptism is the only way to find forgiveness, a washing away of our past sins and our past life of sin. To be cleansed from our previous sins and to be justified, we must seek water baptism into Yahusha's name. It is a public confession and statement. You are baptized in water and in the spirit of Yahuwah or Yahusha, which abides in you. He gives you his power to not sin anymore and to actually hate sin. Our Heavenly Father has promised to bless us abundantly if we obey his commandments, statutes and judgments. Please read Deuteronomy 28, 1-14. Then he warns us of all the curses that will come upon us if we disobey his commandments, statutes, and judgment. In Deuteronomy 28, 15 to verse 48. Yahuwah wants us to serve him with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things then all the blessings he has promised will be showered upon us. Our actions show our true love. John 14, 21 Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. And these very plain words in First John 5, 3, this is love for Yahuwah, to obey his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. My friends, we are, pass we are just passing through. This world is not our home. Therefore, this eternal life is only for those who repent of their sins, accept the Hebrew Messiah Yahusha, who shed his blood for us, be baptized in his name, and follow the instructions he gave to Moses, called Torah. Those that reject him will be damned without question. Don't wait that long. Now is the time for salvation. We cannot trust any man, church, denomination, or religion. 
We cannot trust in Christianity, Judaism, nor Islam, etc. There's only one way to salvation. That is through the Father, Yahuwah, and the Son, Yahusha. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Without Him, man is damned to destruction. He who has the Son has life. So stay away from man-made religion like Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and so on. Will you choose life and obey Yahuwah and keep all His commandments, statutes, and judgment and then be baptized in the name of Yahusha, Messiah? Again, the question, who only is able to write our name in the Lamb's Book of Life? There is only one worthy to be worshipped to begin with, and who is able to write our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. It is Yahuwah Elohim, the Olive Top, the Great I Am. We are to accept Him as the only Savior, to repent of our past sins, to be baptized in the name of Yahusha, and to follow His instruction as given in Torah from now on. Shalom. This presentation originated from Lifeline to Yohusha Ministries. It was organized into a PowerPoint presentation. I added many slides and uh, it was recorded by myself. You can contact me at Malachi 4.4 at reagan.com. You can contact Lifeline to Yahusha Ministry who are located in South Africa and here's all the information for your consideration. Blessings to you.